say that this music came to you? Where from? Okay. Um, around 67 or 68, I just started hearing it in my head and I didn't know where it was coming from. It was just like a radio station inside. And so I'd be uh, running around listening to it and loving it. And that happened for a few years. Then around 1973, I had a profound experience where I sensed a particular being from a higher dimension. And then I knew that instant that he was the one that all this time had been purposely mind to mind transmitting it into my mind. And I also remembered him from before I was born. I realize this is hard for you to believe, but at least I'm telling you what I believe and you're free to <laughs> handle that reality any way you like. So I remembered this from before I was born, that we'd made this agreement, he would shoot it to me and I'd do everything I could to manifest it. I'm functioning as a step down transformer to recreate these patterns here on the physical dimension. So people hear a useful simulation of nature patterns, of uh, harmonious patterns, perfection patterns, paradise patterns, uh, music that's filled with patterns that are free of inharmony and the emotions that are generated are a wild, amazing variety of only harmonious emotions. And many of them I call the higher octave emotions, meaning they're emotions with which we're already familiar, but higher octaves of it. And a simple example is uh, joy. If you knock that up an octave, by the way, that means double the frequency. Joy, an octave higher is ecstasy. An octave higher is rapture. <laughs> and it just keeps going. <laughs> so it's had an effect on me. <laughs> What do you think uh, uh, would be uh, the impact of, um, of such beings getting in touch with uh, lots of humans on this planet? What do you think it would do uh, to our uh, evolution and to our humanity? What it would do is accelerate the process of bringing paradise here on Earth. That's happening anyway. But the more people connect with that dimension, the sooner and more vividly and richly it happens. Now it's happening more and more. On the higher octaves of light, those beings are just looking for any possible opportunity to contact an earthling and relate to them because it's so much to our advantage. But because of the divine law, the cosmic principle of non-interference, they will never move in unless invited. They say, yes, come. You know, without invitation, they can't do anything. Now, it's to their evolutionary advantage to serve, so they'll jump at any opportunity. There's no monopoly on the higher dimensions. They'll use any and every channel they can. What is paradise music? It's an earth reproduction of musical patterns that exist here and now on higher dimensions. Some people can hear it in their consciousness. Others can't hear it, but remember it when they hear it in physical dimension like music, air, air waves. They remember it because when you sleep at night, you leave your physical body, you go to higher dimensions and you hear that music. When you re-enter your body and wake up, you forget it. But if you hear it again on the outside, it reminds you of it. Uh, some people, they've heard my music and not only does it remind them of higher dimensions, but it even makes them homesick for it because in general things tend to be much more harmonious there. So it is an earth transcription of music that exists on higher dimensions, which has quite a few um, characteristics, one of which is it's only harmonious. Another characteristic is there are many levels of sound, each of which is totally harmonious and all of them interrelate only harmoniously. Another one is it doesn't bother with a lot of earthly concepts like only one melody at a time or two melodies at a time. They might have <laughs> they might have 60,000 melodies at, at a time. And also how much you hear depends on where your nervous system is at. For example, if you're an ascended master listening to it, you hear a certain amount. If you're an archangel, you might hear even more. You see? Uh, the floors of it go up all the way to infinity. So how much of it you hear depends on where you're at in your evolution. And it keeps expanding. Another quality of it is that the time discriminations are very subtle, like a painter painting with a much finer brush. A lot is happening in just a tiny bit of time. You know. And that tends to fine tune a person listening to it because in trying to follow the patterns, he's having to make very subtle time discrimination, so that kind of sharpens or fine tunes his ear.
is Vista? Oh, Vista. <laughs> I thought Vista has a European accent. Vista. Okay, who is Vista? Okay, Vista or Vista. This is the name of the being that I work with, that I feel I'm getting most of my ideas from. Now, a name doesn't really mean very much to most people, so it doesn't matter what his name is. But um, he's part of the spiritual hierarchy for this planet. He has many functions. And I feel honored uh, that I'm working with him. Vista is part of the fifth ray, the different spiritual qualities radiated on this planet. And the seven primary qualities, each of the different kind of spiritual energy, and they call it one of the seven rays. And Vista is working on the fifth ray related to the pituitary chakra and inner seeing, inner vision, which is related to why he's called Vista. And his female divine complement is called Crystal. <laughs> when I'm feeling Vista, it's like this majestic being that's shooting these majestic concepts and images into my consciousness and then crystal she gives me more emotional reinforcement and upliftment like she'll send me this tube of um bubbles of giggling energy that's <laughs> it's hard to convey it it's like a feeling from her heart to me it's like a stream of bubbles that are just filled with, with crystal giggling energy and it has the effect of brightening me up the cosmic push? Uh, no, the cosmic push is not related just to me in particular. That's something happening on a planetary level where right now is a wild, amazing opportunity for accelerated spiritual growth. They want to bloom as many human souls as possible in a very short period of time. And so there's an amazing radiation of light, radiation of higher octaves, just to help accelerate man's awakening to his own divinity, which is why nowadays you find a lot of so-called straight people talking about God and divinity and religion that normally you would never think people like that would talk about it. Everybody's being affected by this uh, push. I recently heard one of the astronauts talking at the uh, Davis Whole Earth Festival, and it was really an experience because when I was tuning into him, where he was coming from was this very straight, logical, responsible background, taking responsibility, being totally grounded, and yet in his soul I could feel where he wanted to be coming from was a minister, you know, total divinity. Everyone is having that influence now. So the cosmic push is referring to the general spiritual influence radiated on all sides, everybody on the planet. Paradise is a frequency range. Um, just like boredom is low frequency, hatred is very low frequency, love is a nice high frequency, paradise is a super high frequency. And some people live there and some people occasionally go there, some people don't know what you're talking about. So just a matter of uh, revving up your aura, fine-tuning it and upshifting it to where you're operating in those ranges. And, and the more people that are functioning on that level within, then the more paradise is manifested without. so that when a person at home listens on stereo headphones, he's going to end up with the same thing that I started with in here. <laughs> I'm just trying to generate uh, paradise music and get it out there as precisely and vividly and realistically as I can. And all of these are just tools to help me manipulate sound in very subtle and flexible ways. And uh, my flexibility, of course, is continually increasing because I'm continually channeling my attention in that direction. All these electronics that you have in this other room are... <laughs> Yes. Don't you feel that it's in a way, I mean, you're, you're supposed to be the, you are the new age musician and you are personally into health and nature. Yes. However, half of your time is spent in a total cybernetic environment. Yes. Is there a paradox here or am I? No, uh, it's basically electrons. Electrons are just pure God beings. They're very sensitive to God control. And they're totally at your disposal. They'll rush to do whatever you want them to do. So it's a very flexible way to manipulate sound. It doesn't feel unnatural to me at all.
do you see any relation with all these uh, UFO uh, sightings and close encounters that uh, people are talking about more and more these days? The relation is a very general, complex, broad one. UFOs are a multi-dimensional reality that temporarily is perceived by people on this physical dimension. Sometimes people will see a UFO and others won't, even though they're looking at the same place, same time. And the reason some see it is because their visual cortex is picking up on higher frequencies, like a radio hearing higher frequencies, and the other person isn't. So many UFOs are right on the borderline of just above this physical dimension, and they can vary the vibratory rate of the molecules of the spaceship. And if they vibrate it slow enough, it can be visible to a normal human being. Usually they're going higher than that, so you don't see it. <laughs> Sometimes you feel it. So what they have in common is they're both multidimensional realities. But well, that's a very general thing. How should one uh, listen to your music? The ideal way is stereo headphones, in my case. Most music, when it's mixed down in a, re in a recording studio, they use speakers as their ultimate reference, and you can also listen on headphones if you like. In my case, it's different. I use uh, stereo headphones as my ultimate reference, and there's a specific reason for that. With headphones, you can get very precise localization of a sound, whether it's here or there or there or there or there. And with speakers, you can't, because what comes out of the left speaker is heard by both ears, not just the left one, so the leakage blurs the stereo image. With headphones, you can have a very sharply defined stereo spacing, and some of the newer music I'm coming up with now, because I have some new equipment that allows me to get a sense of depth, some things being very close, very far, farther away, infinitely far, allows for some very three-dimensional effects. Uh, you can have a foreground of things close, you can have sounds zooming out to infinity from close right to center, like that, or other sounds blooming out from the top of your head, like this. And if a person listens to this music, the newer music that I'm starting to do now, with stereo headphones, if they just close their eyes and focus their attention on the music, that will induce three-dimensional holograms in consciousness. That is the intended experience of the music. It's very 3D. It's not just like a flat left-center right thing. It's also close, far, infinitely far. And other effects like coming up from the top like that. So the intended way to listen to my music is through stereo headphones. Of course, it can be used any way, underwater. <laughs> uh, but the ultimate way, <laughs> imagine giving headphones to a porpoise. <laughs> See what it do. Is that way. And that's related to the fact that Vista working on the fifth ray and the pituitary chakra is trying to give people inner vision, inner sight. And this is, it creates a vision in your consciousness. And that's a three-dimensional hologram. And it's the sound that does that, just with two, Im uh, two inputs, left and the right. But that's not the uh, ultimate purpose. No, that is the ultimate manner of tuning into it. And once you tune into it, the purpose starts having an effect, which is very simply just to help attune people to higher frequencies and to help harmonize them and ground them, and to align your four lower bodies, your etheric, mental, emotional, and physical bodies. When you're surrounded by harmonious patterns, it tends to align them. For example, if you go for a walk in nature, just the innate harmony of nature will tend to align any harmonious pattern has an aligning effect. So this music is saturated with perfection patterns. It has the effect of lining a person. And also, because many of the things that are designed into it, it has a subtilizing effect. Because as the new age is now coming in, higher, 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 subtler, subtler, subtler frequencies of reality are coming in. So if a person is to adapt and stay with it rather than fall behind, it's good to sharpen his nervous system to higher subtler frequencies, and this has that effect.